Hello, my name is Jim Buckenmeyer. I'm with Nature's Toolbox with the Hard Knox Independent. Today I'm going to be talking about herbal teas and how to make them. We will do three different preparations. One is an herbal tea if you're going to be using it as a medicinal and you want to make it just one time into an iced tea. The other will be a brewed fresh leaf tea and then we will be using one of the woody teas. This is sassafras root and those are made in a slightly different manner. Basic tools are real simple. Your pots, something to strain with, whether it be pouring it through here, using a tea ball or an infusion bag and what we'll be working with today is metal because I happen to have kidney problems so I drink metal tea on a daily basis I will mix that with a green tea for the antioxidants as I said this is sassafras Interesting thing about sassafras, it once was thought of a cure-all, and because of that, it was our country's largest export because they thought it would cure the Black Plague. Well, that's the first revolution we won against the British. Then this is fresh lemon balm that I just picked out of the garden. All right. For your iced tea preparations, I'm going to go ahead and I'll fill my pot half full, a couple tea bags of, a couple of large tea bags of green tea, and then I'm going to fill my infusion bag with about the same amount of tea as you have in the tea bags there, which is about two teaspoons. Now a good ratio for dry to fresh is for every two teaspoons of fresh that you would use you use one teaspoon of dry. I'm taking just putting in my infusion bag and I will close it up and throw it in just like the regular tea bags. Let's put that on the stove Turn it on medium to high and then let that start boiling. Normally when you make tea, your best tea is made just below the boiling point, if you steep it just below the boiling point. However, with your herbal teas, it will take a little bit more to get the best properties out. So you will want to actually bring it to a boil and leave it at a boil for a few minutes. With fresh herbs, you need to present more of a surface area. The herbs don't want to give up their oils as, and phenols and other good properties as quickly unless they are macerated. I can use a mortar and pestle to do this, but I prefer to chop them with my little vegetable chopper. And all I'm doing really is creating much more surface area for the hot water to go against. This is lemon balm. I will tell you, uh, many of my friends love this to help them relax at night. It's also good for diabetics and people with thyroid problems unless the thyroid regulation is way off. So I would check with your doctor if you have a thyroid condition before using lemon balm. And once chopped up, that's about two teaspoons, which would be a normal one teaspoon. And this is for my single serving, getting ready for bed at night. See. The final product that we're going to make is sassafras tea. Any rooty or woody herb needs to be boiled 
for at least half an hour, usually 45 minutes. And you boil it almost all the way down. Therefore, I filled my pan almost full. I take the sassafras root. I have already shaved this. I find it cooks down a lot better if I shave it rather than putting in whole root. Again, it's presenting that surface area for it to work on. And I put about two to three tablespoons of the shaved root in there. It has a wonderful smell. Anytime I take my herbs out, by the way, I always smell it before I use them. Because they could mold or mildew. No matter how you store them, whether it's in a paper bag, a plastic bag, or even in a jar, they can mold or mildew, or they can go rancid. So you can smell each of those things, and I'd just throw them away if they were bad. I'll put this on the stove and begin boiling it on a little bit lower heat, about a half an hour to... 40 minutes. The sassafras tea does give up its oils a little quicker than some of your other woody ones, so a half an hour ought to do it. Finally, I'm going to be working with the fresh herbs, like I said. And my mortar and pestle works great, but I prefer to chop them. I'm going to give these just a little more chop. And then take my ball. And you can cram this pretty full because when you're when you add the hot tea water it will work its way inside it. Since I'm using fresh herb, I'm going to fill both halves, both sides of my ball. Lock it down. And you'll put the, put this in your teacup. It's got a nice little hook on the side so you can keep the chain, pull it out. I would never throw away these herbs. It's not much, but hey, I can add it to tomorrow's. So I will add that to my to be dehydrated list. While I'm waiting for this to get ready, I'm going to prepare my iced tea blend. The most healthy way is to drink it without any sweetening. I cannot do so. I do use the raw sugar, the turbinado, and you can buy this in bulk at most places in the area. I would recommend buying it in bulk. It's about one third the price of buying it already boxed. And I will add this to my iced tea. I then will gather up a bunch of ice and promise someone I will mop the floor later. And have that ready. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting for things to boil. All right, we have our tea kettle come to boil. And you just steep it directly boiling. Now, like I said, to make a normal cup of tea, your black teas and your oolongs, you would normally let this cool for a minute before you did it. Making an herbal tea, you want it to be at the full boiling temperature. My iced tea's reached a nice color. That's the green tea and nettle. So I know that it has boiled enough. And it only really came to a rolling boil for about a minute to two minutes. That's all you really need. I go ahead and add it to my the raw sugar is sweeter, but it has a, it's much harder to, to melt. So I go ahead and pour this off into the sugar that I've already added. Fish my uh, infusion bag out, which by the way, they're reusable and can be bought at most health food stores. I stir it. Add my ice cubes to cool it down. And fill the rest of the gallon with water. 
I try to drink between 16 and 32 ounces of this a day. Uh, that is a good medicinal dose uh, for any herbal teas. Many people will drink the herbal teas for the medicinal properties of the herbs. Uh, and having it already pre-made in the refrigerator, it tastes wonderful. Lemon balm tea is real good all by itself. I would recommend that you empty your tea ball out almost immediately because the herbs will dry against the screen and be very difficult to use. But the lemon balm tea is real good just by itself. If you do want to sweeten it, the best sweetener is local honey. Um, not the honey you buy in stores. The, most of the honey you buy in stores do not contain any pollens, therefore they're not a true honey. And most likely it's colored water and sugar. And then finally, we still have our sassafras tea boiling, so we'll come back in a few minutes and look at it. It looks like sassafras tea is finally boiled down. You'll notice it's a reddish purplish color. Uh, that is ideal. If you have real fresh root, it'll be a lot more purple. Dried root will be a little more red. You want to strain the wood chips out. And always use a mason jar or a canning jar for this. If you try to add the boiling water to something like a mayonnaise jar or some other jar like that, it will very likely crack on you. Then you can seal this, and if you seal it while it's still hot, you can form an actual seal with the canning jar. And I will put that in the refrigerator after it cools. And that is a very wonderful tea to have sitting in front of the fire at night or on a real cold morning. It helps. The main important things to remember whenever you're wanting to use teas in a medicinal way is bring it to a boil. And if you're going to boil it in the pot, go ahead and let it boil for a few minutes. If you're going to use fresh herbs, you use twice the amount that you would have dried herbs because the water that's in the herbs actually takes up a lot of space. You want to cut them up so that you present more surface area and you steep it like you would a normal cup of tea. And if you're going to make something for the long run, it's real good to make into an iced tea that you'll enjoy drinking. Many of the herb teas will have a taste that you're unfamiliar with and will be maybe bitter. It may taste of chlorophyll. These tastes actually become normal to you after about three to five days of use. And with the nettle tea, I now miss it whenever I have green tea without the nettle in it. I think it's all a wonderful way to get the medicinal herbs in and it's also a very enjoyable and relaxing way to have a cup of tea. Thank you all very much and I'll see you next time.